Hi there, and welcome to the show. This show airs on Sundays at 3 o'clock p.m. on Channel 29. So remember, you can use my Twitter handle, at Paula Fiscal Show, and use the hashtag SFCommons. And we're also on Facebook. And every show is uploaded to YouTube on the Friday before this show airs on Sundays. So thank you very much for joining us today. Now this is the political season in San Francisco and our election is November 3rd. In San Francisco we have had very, very, very many of our Latinos looking for work and also we happen to have one Latino here who's running for mayor. So we're going to be asking Mr. Francisco Herrera some pertinent questions that will be on the ballot. We're going to get his opinion on how we should vote on certain uh, propositions. And we're going to hear a little bit from him about his background. Now, I can tell you that according to my Google search, Mr. Herrera, this is his first run for mayor, first run for public office, excuse me. And he is from Mexicali, a border town in Mexico. He's 52 years old. He studied political science and graduated with a master's degree in theology. So to begin with, we want to welcome Francisco and tell us a little bit about what it was that made you believe that you needed to run for mayor. Yeah. Well, and also with all, with the great love and respect for Mexicali, I was uh, born actually in Calexico, California, which is on the U.S. side of the border. And Mexicali is the great city of over two million people with a large Chinese and Arabic population, actually, uh, along with the rest of us. <laughs> um, Interesting. Yeah. Well, you know what made me uh, walk for mayor? We're, we're saying we're walking for mayor and, and our team because it's a, we need to develop an organized way of uh, proceeding and really looking at political change in a way that actually changes the way we do politics. What made me do this is really looking at our communities, working class communities, very specifically Mission and Excelsior communities where we've been seeing these mysterious fires, this very violent um, and belligerent gentrification that's not about people who want to come in and blend in with the community but folks who have been uh, showing great disdain and disrespect for the community for the elderly for for the homeless uh, for our our cultural heritage and even to the point of death I mean Alex Nieto was killed so was Amilcar Perez Lopez on Folsom and 24th a uh, family died in a fire uh, on Folsom and 24th. 24 families were displaced. One person died on 22nd admission. Looking at all this disgrace that was happening and then seeing that it wasn't just the mission, that really Excelsior, Chinatown, North Beach, a friend, a 75-year-old friend with cancer kicked out of her apartment. She fought it thanks to community efforts, and we were able to win her being able to stay there. Uh, the, so let's let's go back a little bit yeah. on the uh, Latino issue. How many Latino families have been displaced? Yeah, when we were preparing to challenge the monster and the mission and other gentrification projects, we discovered in the process 10,000 people in the last three years have been displaced, evicted from the mission, 8,000 of which are Latinos and Latino families. Uh, it's been tremendous, the, the effect that has changed. Today there was an article of a study that David Campos commissioned and is out now saying we're, we've lost 20% of our population f just from the mission. You know, but there's people in, in all the neighborhoods 
that are suffering. So, so that's this is what happening all over the city. Throughout it the, is happening in Chinatown. It yes. is happening in Richmond. Yes. And uh, we attribute this to We attribute this to the runaway housing market that's been created that's been allowed to happen. Mayor Lee and and actually Gavin Newsom as well, they didn't need to let this happen, but they've behaved more like managers for corporations than politicians who defend the common good and the common welfare of our neighborhoods, of our communities. And so this has been allowed to happen where, where, where houses that are not worth a million dollars are being sold for that quantity because there's been no oversight, uh, just like there's been very little oversight over uh, the behavior of police or the training, that kind of thing. So we need politicians to behave like politicians and protect the common welfare. Okay, let's talk a little bit about your platform. Yes. Because as we all know, when you are going to the groups to ask for their endorsement, when you're talking to the everyday person to ask them to vote for you, what do you tell them? Well, Something. you know what, Paula? It's very interesting because we didn't go asking for endorsements, at, uh, hardly at all. Well, we went and asked, what is the major issue that's affecting your community, your generation, your group? Number one was housing. Stop the evictions was the clear call throughout the city from different folks from different income levels. It wasn't just poor people or, or working class folks. It was all all of the 99%, as we call it nowadays, uh, number one was clearly stop the evictions, help us find the way that we, can, that we can afford to stay here. Education was number two in terms of saving City College, but also back to housing in terms of 300 teachers in the school district cannot afford to live here. 2,700 children are living in their cars, you know, it, it, according to the school district of San Francisco, and, and their cars in living rooms, in friends' houses. So that now, was number minute, one. Let's go over those figures a little bit closer there. Mm -hmm. You are saying that there are 2,700 children living in cars? The school district has registered at least 2,700 children who are being affected by homelessness right now. And whose children are these? The children are of they our Latinos are they African American? Are it's they? a combination. Mostly, there's been Latino, African American, and and a blending of some of the other communities that have been affected by this. Even people who are working. So it's not an issue of you don't have a job, you don't have a house. No. Even in the sunset, we discovered in creating the platform, we didn't just do it like we dropped. No, we talked with over 200. At this point, it's been over 300 people That in was groups. going to be my next question. Le that how did you decide what your platform was going to be? Yeah, and we actually you did, said... You did uh, polling. Yeah, we did polling. We did group work. We said, look, we're running and we're coming into this late. So we need to really find out because the point was how do we really make City Hall respond to the real needs of San Franciscans? So we had to go out and search the real needs. Living wage, high on the marks, you know, the ability to let people organize, uh, credit, uh, uh, car check neutrality. Definitely uh, uh, sanctuary was a big issue even before uh, Donald Trump and all the clowns started yelling about sanctuary cities. Um, it was very important. And, you know, one that was key, that's why it's number two, is the whole budgetary priorities. You've got human service workers. You've got hospital workers. You've got folks, uh, teachers. I'm supported by the, uh, my own union, American Federation of Teachers 2121, city college teachers who are on, on government support because they cannot afford to live in San Francisco or to buy food, either rent or food or gasoline for your car. You have to choose what's going on, no? Well, that was going to be my next question about who has endorsed you. And uh, earlier you were talking a little bit about uh, people from Local 21 and, or COPE, and uh, yes. they came to you unsolicited. Yeah, no, as we were working and, and doing, because like I said, we didn't go looking for endorsements. We went looking for for problems that people felt are important to face and solutions. We wanted to see what solutions are already happening. So from city workers, we started hearing, oh, I, I heard you're walking for mayor and I've already decided to vote for you. I said, really? Well, I heard from so-and-so and, -so and, and hear from so-and-so. So it really started 
very naturally growing through the grassroots of the community. I've been here almost 30 years. We've worked. I've been in the school district with our kids. The, so and you so, were actually a teacher in the school system? I've so. worked as a children's musician with school district children and parents. I've been a parent liaison. I've worked in uh, advocating for parent issues. I've worked with schools uh, in film, doing music for films. Let's talk about film for just a little bit. <laughs> I just happen to have a... Just happened to be there, right? Algún Día by Pepe Licula, Pepe Urquijo. And yes, I did the music for Algún Día, which is a wonderful, wonderful film done in black and white, actually, old uh, Época de Oro del Cine Mexicano style of the 1940s and 50s. And again, you know, in 1994, what is it? It's a movie about a family being evicted. And a, a man oh. who defends his rights it's, and gets arrested and deported. So, so it's not like you just started this work in our community. You've no, been no, no. Quite a long time. Yeah, doing people this. said, "What are your credentials?" My credentials. My credentials have been on the receiving end of bad policy, and I'm sick of seeing it. But also of good policy. In the late 1999, early 2000s, we created a community peace initiative. It used to be called Violence Prevention, and we said violence prevention. I think we need to work on peace. Yes. And and so we were able to fund, move the city budget to fund after school program, three to six, midnight basketball, fund the real alternatives program van, which used to intervene into possible dangerous situations. And we were able to create a budget that supported us. And for two, two years, Paula, there was no killing, gang on gang killing. Uh, because of that project, we were able to fund. So what we discovered in the process is that our community, throughout the different communities in San Francisco, already have a lot of solutions. It's the political will at City Hall that's missing to listen to those solutions and to budget for them. Responsible budgeting. Let's talk again a little bit more about the budgeting that takes place in City Hall and how the priorities are identified and who does this. Do you think it rest just on the mayor or is it the board no, of supervisors no i think it's a combination i think the last three mayors have created a situation where uh it's not just pay to play but if you don't have enough money to live here they say if you don't make two hundred thousand dollars a year you can't they kick you out you shouldn't live here as are you going to say that to an 83 year old lady Who's, who made this city, oh, sorry, you're on a fixed income, you don't make $200,000 a year, get out of here? Is that the kind of city we want? So that's the, the, the budget question for us is, what city do we want and how do we pay to have that city that we want for ourselves, our children, our grandchildren? Let's talk a little bit about the uh, initiatives on the ballot. Uh -huh. For example, uh, proposition one to temporarily suspend luxury housing development in the mission once again it's a runaway housing market has been created none of this free market the invisible hand of Adam Smith it's the sleight of hand of bad politics irresponsible gambling with our city budget and and the mayor's allowing investors not developers investors whose bottom line is what profit. At whose expense? At our expense. There's no free lunch and there's no free market. We defined what market benefits the city of San Francisco, what market benefits the people of San Francisco, and we go after those goals and we make it work. Working together, supervisors, administration of mayors, and working together we create the wisdom of the city. Okay, on that note, let's just talk a little bit about one of the initiatives on the ballot, which is Prop F. And for those of you that are unfamiliar with Prop F, this is the one where it's going to limit short-term rentals. Uh, primarily, the uh, opposition to this is Airbnb, because currently, right now, there are many, many uh, landlords and master leaseholders that are renting out their rooms and their apartments to Airbnb for more money than they're paying rent, because some of them have a uh, rent-controlled unit. So what is your position on this? Yes on F, and I didn't finish answering on I, but yes on I, which puts a stop so we could rehash and relook at how we can create housing for our families who are here. Same thing with F. F basically is already existing 
in New York, in Houston, in other cities, uh, where you're basically saying, if you're going to turn your house into a hotel, you know, we have to put limits on that. And Airbnb and the other, because it's not just Airbnb, right. but there's other platforms on the Internet, exactly. right? Uh, you have to pay like a hotel then you pay your your fair share of taxes and not kind of create these little hoopholes where you can become rich on our expense once again our ticket you know so yes on f yes on i and we included h there too because affordability paula is not just about paying the rent it's also about how we could reduce the cost of living in electricity and uh power powered sf is been working and in January we'll start a lot, uh, making available real competition. You know, I love all these people that talk about, oh, the free market, but they always are trying to f or do what? Monopoly. <laughs> you know, not competition. So age will provide real competition for PG&E and will provide lower prices on, on energy for us. So that's why we're supporting Prop H. Okay, let's uh, go on to list some of your endorsements. And I want to start with the SF Green Party because in San Francisco here, we're familiar with the SF Green Party. They worked with Matt Gonzalez when he yes. ran for mayor uh, many years ago. But what did you have to do to get that SF Green Party endorsement? Well, you know, I've been voting green. I've been a Green Party member for, for many years, actually. I remember... You I, I rem met you before. I remember the day on 24th and Mission about 20 years ago. It was like all my life a Democrat, working class, very proud of it. And I just got tired of this old, oh, the better of two evils. Oh, come on. The other guys were. And I just thought, you know, that's it. I got to start voting my conscience and my values. And I signed up in the Green Party. And I haven't been that active, but enough enough to know some of the what was going on so basically when i decided to do this this walk for mayor i went to the green party and said yeah we will endorse you but other than that all, all the other endorsements really came up from the grass, grassroots level grassroots endorsements let me read them because we have a very short show here yeah uh, sf tenants union san francisco league of pissed off voters SEIU Local 1021. City Workers. City Workers. AFT Local 2121. The Honorable Tom Amiano. Sheriff Ross Mercurimi. Supervisor John Avalos. Concepcion J. Salcedo, PhD. Roberto Hernandez, artistic producer. We also have Poet Laureate Jack Hirschman. Poet Laureate Alejandro Murguia. Ruth Franco, Peter Gable, Dolores Reyes. Talk a little bit and about the Peace what and Freedom Party and as the Peace well. and Freedom Party. Um, and then we also have a newspaper here, which I think you oh, have. Oh, the, 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 West, the yes. West Side Observer. The West Side Observer um, had a nice article on you and recommended endorsing you. And uh, well, it wasn't the editor, but it was one of the writers in the West Side Observer by the name of Patrick Monet Shaw. Hello there, Patrick. <laughs> so we want to uh, thank you for that recommendation, Patrick, that says that if you have to vote for somebody for mayor, you should vote first for Francisco and second for Amy Farah Weiss and then third for Broke-Ass Stewart. Stewart Schiffman, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so that would send a message to Ed Lee. But uh, I want to ask you a story, the story that you were telling me about Local 21, what they, what they went through to get you. Yeah, it was really interesting because, as I said earlier, we started hearing from city workers saying, yeah, we're definitely voting for you, and we want you to come to the COPE meeting so that we can actually have you endorsed by Local 21. And it went through a process of, of internally them working it out until one day, uh, I think it was David Williams who said, you're going to get a call from from uh, the COPE, the, the committee, uh, political action committee there, and to come. And sure enough, Ariana Casanova, who directs that piece, called and said, I'm sending you a questionnaire. We went and had the meeting. It was really a great uh, discussion that afternoon. And, um, and actually, Aaron... Peskin also told me he'd vote for me. And, uh, <laughs> I was going to move right into the other <laughs> endorsements uh, here from the SF COPE because uh, that's a, a pretty impressive endorsement. They yes. also endorsed uh, Aaron Peskin for 
Supervisor District Three, Very important. for Sheriff Ross Mercurimi, and for the City College Board, yeah. Tom Temprano. I, I totally I support. The difference for me is I support Wendy, Wendy Aragon. I think she's done a very, very good job. and But I, I think Tom has done a great job, too. I, there was something about Wendy's track record and commitment through City College and Savings City College that I really appreciated the the level of work that w went with her. But um, let's talk a little bit about the other propositions. Yes. For example, paid parental leave for city workers. What is your position on that? Very important. Yes, on B, we need to support our city workers, and, and especially we need to get them back to live here. More than half city workers can't even live in San Francisco. So, yeah. Okay, and how about Proposition C, the expenditure lobbyist? No, you know, at first it looked like it's a good deal, but then we realized that small groups are going to be loaded with a bunch of paperwork that they and cannot the afford. Yeah, and nonprofits. Particularly the nonprofits. Yeah, so it's really going to strangle folks to be able to, to work, and so we decided no on C. Well, uh, forgive me for skipping over the housing bond. Yeah. Let's, but uh, let's save that for last. Let's go on to D, Mission Rock Development. You know, I think, uh, personally, I voted no on D because I think it's it sets up, it's really a thing on, on building heights. Uh, and I'm not convinced about this gentleman handshake. Even, even Mayor uh, um, Agnos said, well, there's a gentleman's handshake that 40% will be affordable. So uh, as mayor... I'll make sure that it's a it's a real deal of the forty percent affordable, but um, but I think it's more the issue of height limits and and breaking that open. I, I I don't really trust that at this point. Okay, how about E requirements for public meetings? Now on this one, I had uh, the two students that started the initiative to get this onto the ballot, and they were very earnest uh, and. Uh, it sounded like a good idea until I began to look at the caveats, which is that if somebody from Florida wanted to hold up our meetings, they could. Yeah, so exactly. this is an initiative that really doesn't have to go in front of the voters, and it can be handled directly by the Board of Supervisors. Yes, I, so, I say no on E as well. Voting, yeah. that's a no. Okay, let's go on then. We've spoken about F, the short-term residential mm -hmm. rentals. Uh, G disclosures regarding renewable energy. No on G. That was a that was a fight that PG&E tried to put right. in and they they worked out, but they couldn't. They backed out, but it couldn't. They couldn't they pull, couldn't it, out pull it out anymore. Yeah, yeah, because it was ballot. already in the ballot. Okay, so yes on Then H. we're going to I. We said yes on, yes I, on I for sure. And then J, the Legacy Business Historic Preservation Fund. Yeah, I know. Uh, I know David uh, Campos had a lot to do with that yes. one, and uh, and I think. I think it doesn't go far enough, to tell you the truth. I think it uh, provides... It's well-intentioned. It's, it's well-intentioned. Well uh, I'm a little bit hesitant about endorsing this one because I don't care for the way you have to get nominated. Yes. You have to go through the Board of Supervisors. This is something that, for a small business owner, it takes a lot of hoop and, jumping. And, and you know what? For the amount of money you're going to get to it, and it's not going to go straight to the but workers. It's, it's, but it's, it's a good step. It's a good step. Yeah, it's a step forward. It's a step forward. And maybe we've been we working. need to vote for this so that it passes, so that yeah. we can begin to, to yes. work on this a, a step little forward. bit more. As a matter of fact, we were work. I was working personally. Uh, my wife and I were working with Modern Times precisely as a legacy business because it's a v jewel in the community, right? Right. So uh, there is a very needed space to support small businesses, especially with this runaway housing market. I'm all for commercial rent control, but we have to. <laughs> push that at the state we'd level. Have to do, yeah, we'd yeah, have, we'd to, have do to do a, a lot of work for on that one. Rent yeah. control. That's we'll, not going to We've got all, all, our friend, all our friends in Southern California. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay, let's go on to um, K. K, and surplus yes. public lands. Yes, to really, uh, you know, that's part of the solution of, of looking. Yes, if we take over all the surplus public lands and convert it into affordable housing, that yeah. would be nice. And yes. then we could have our police live here, our teachers live here. Very our, important. Our, our 2,000, no, make that 3,000 employees that make over $100,000 as yeah. department heads here, but they still don't live here. Exactly. Okay. Well, and we have to look at that budget because three, $345 million in the budget for executives, $7 million for travel expense. I mean, 
you know, we really have to look at some of these priorities in the budget and respond to health and human services uh, in terms of supporting human service and health workers, uh, more employees, better pay uh, for teachers, for all city workers really needs to be looked at in terms of the budget. Okay, let's just talk a little bit more about the infrastructure in San Francisco to deal with transportation. Well, transportation I, think, I think it's really important to question these big buses that are, that are destroying the infrastructure of the streets. And when the streets need new pipes, Google, eBay, and all the other guys aren't going to be around to pay for that. We're, once again, there ain't no free market. We're the ones that are left to pay for that. And so it, we have to question that and we have to re-examine. We leave them at bay, leave those buses outside of the city at some point and make people, and make, make them pay for Muni. They'd be heroes. You know, Twitter came, they paid for Muni. We all got together a better Muni. They There's could be heroes. There's a hero story if I've ever heard one. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, with uh, that segue, I want to thank you for joining us. Remember, you can log on to YouTube, The Paula Fiscal Show, and you can see all the shows. We want to thank Francisco Herrera for mayor for joining thank us. Thank you, gracias. And uh, we want to keep you informed, so please do email us and uh, use our Twitter handle. Check out our Facebook page. And I want to give a couple of minutes for Mr. Herrera to give us a few tips on how to get involved politically and then his closing remarks. Well, it's important to get involved politically from the very start, and we see it with kids who are working in their community. We see it with young adults who are engaging with the nonprofit organizations and looking at city budget. Those kind of things is crucial to be involved in the community and ask the question, what kind of city do we want? The San Francisco that we love. Ask yourself, what is that San Francisco and how you could make it a beautiful, family, working family-friendly city again. Thank you so much for joining us. And again, we want to urge you to go out and vote on November 3rd. We don't want to hear any excuses now. You get out there and vote. You can do your mail-in or you can walk it in or you can go around in your neighborhood and vote. So let's get out there and prove that Latinos do vote. Again, thank you for, very much for joining us, Francisco. Thank you. We appreciate your time. And vote one, two, three to replace Ed Lee. Oh, that was a cute tag. <laughs> vote one, two, three to replace Ed Lee. Okay. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you.